the spirit of Aikido came from one man, Morihei Uyeshiba, in the early part of this century. The basis of Aikido technique can be traced back over seven centuries. A famous pupil of Uyeshiba was Kenji Tomiki, who gave his name to a style of Aikido, the one we are presenting in this video, featuring Dr. Lee Arloy, 6th Dan, Ken Broom, 5th Dan, and Sean Hoddy, 3rd Dan. The study of Aikido takes place in a dojo. The central point of the dojo is the shrine, which reminds students of the spiritual basis of their art. Here are often displayed photographs of eminent teachers, examples of calligraphy, and perhaps artifacts connected with the Shinto religion of Japan, or with Buddhism. Before training begins, the class bows to the teacher, sensei, and bows again at the end, using the sitting or kneeling bow, zare. All training sessions begin with some kind of warming up exercises, which are demonstrated here. The aim is suppleness and flexibility rather than strength. Aikido teachers may vary in their choice of exercise, and here we show ones chosen by Dr. Lee Arloy. In a class situation, the number of repetitions of an exercise are sometimes counted out in the Japanese language. In order to reduce the shock of hitting the mat, tatami, beginners learn to break their fall in three ways, forward, backward, and to the side. This is an important part of training. It gives 
student's confidence reduces the fear of falling and enables the Aikidoka, students of Aikido, to take dozens of falls without any apparent ill effects. Break falls, or ukemi, means to receive through the body, begin as close to the ground as possible. From crouching, for instance, to standing, and then to falling with the help of the partner. This makes ukemi training a gradual process, reducing the likelihood of injury as a beginner progresses. In each of the three types of ukemi shown here, you can observe the gradual progression. With time, a student learns to give himself or herself to the okemi and to stop resisting. Like a little child or a drunken person, the student releases the tension of the body produced by our common fear of falling. Important points to notice are the tucking in of the chin to prevent the head striking the tatami, and on the side and backward break falls, the sharp slap given to the tatami. This helps to counteract the downward force of the body. Aikido break falls are similar to the ones taught in judo and jujutsu. Japanese society, everyone sat on the floor. The most common position was seiza, which literally means sitting properly. This is the position in which the kneeling bow is performed. Following from seiza is shiko, or knee walking. Traditionally, it was not polite to stand up, walk across a room, and sit down again, especially in the presence of a person higher up in the social scale. For instance, a samurai would never do this in front of his lord. Shiko became the accepted way of walking about indoors. You can see it in any Japanese film set in bygone days. In correct Shiko, the back is upright the head erect and the shoulders loose. Western people, unaccustomed to sitting on the floor, do not always find this an easy position to adopt, but it is important to get used to it 
are some of the more advanced Aikido techniques again from the Seiza position. An important hand position in Aikido is called Te Gatana, which means that the hand is held as if it were the blade of a sword, like this. There are three positions for Te Gatana, high, middle, and low. From these basic positions the hand can sweep in various directions to carry out a technique. Training also covers prearranged foot movements or unsoku. Unsoku teaches a student how to maintain stability so that the balance is not lost when doing a technique and at the same time gives an introduction to a different way of moving.
when the hand and foot movements are combined, students can move about the tatami with their hands in contact, like this. Here, the advancing student presses forward from his feet, through the body, and through the leading hand. The retreating student learns to give way and avoid the pressure, ready to take advantage of the opponent and perhaps throw him to the ground. This exercise is done in the Te Gatana hand position and a similar exercise is done in the palm to palm position. It is called Shote. In Shote training, the students do not move but press firmly toward one another, keeping their posture. are able to do break balls well and can move about the mat freely in the way they have been taught, Aikido techniques such as these are introduced. Noruhe Uyeshiba was born in 1883. Like a number of other famous martial artists, he was weak and frail as a child. His father encouraged him to take part in sports such as sumo, swimming and running. This developed into a Spartan way of life and the boy dreamed of becoming the strongest man in the world. Schools of martial arts abounded in Japan at that time. In addition to the national sport of sumo, there were many teachers and students of jujutsu and sword fighting or kendo. It was to such people that a yeshiba was attracted. Aikido did not exist, but its forerunner, Aikijutsu, could trace its history back through several centuries. Uyeshiba eventually focused his training on the Daito Ryu school of Aikijutsu under the seventh generation master, Sakaku Takeda. 
The yeshiva was also a profoundly religious man and studied deeply the teachings of Buddhism and Shinto. He underwent a profound religious experience and according to his followers developed powers bordering on the supernatural. He welded his dedication to martial arts and religion into a new system to which he later gave the name Aikido. His was not a system of learning how to fight but of how to understand oneself, other people and the world in which we live through martial arts training. A prominent judo man, Kenji Tomiki, came to study with Uyeshiba and in time was given a teaching license. Tomiki saw in Aikido a method of educating young people by emphasizing the sporting aspect. When Uyeshiba died in 1969, his son Kishomaru carried on the tradition. Other students of the master, such as Gozo Shioda and Koichi Tohei, branched out on their own. It would be more in keeping with the spirit of Aikido to say that each of these men developed a special attitude or approach to the art, rather than founded his own school since the fundamental aim of Aikido is harmony and not division. Tomiki brought more organization into the teaching of the art and formulated a series of techniques which all Tomiki students learn. These are known as the basic seventeen Randori no Kata. The first technique is Shomen Ate. The second technique is Aigamai Ate. Notice that Uke does not resist. The third technique is Gyaku Gamai Ate. The fourth technique, Gedan Ate. Before Tori actually throws Uke, Uke's balance is broken. Ushiro Ate, the fifth technique. Oshi Teoshi, the sixth technique. In the seventh technique, Ude Gaishi, a more complicated arm lock is used. Hiki Teoshi, 
the eighth technique brings uke forwards for the first time. The ninth technique, ude garami, gives uke the opportunity to practice the forward breakfall. Uke does not fall to the ground with waki gatami, the tenth technique. In the eleventh technique, kote hineri, Tori steps forward to raise Uke's arm and begin to apply the lock. The twelfth technique, Kote Gaish, is one of the most painful Aikido locks or twisting techniques. When the hand is seized in this way, all the pressure is exerted on the wrist, so a great deal of care has to be exercised. Tenkai Kote Hineri, the thirteenth technique, is yet another wrist lock, this time gripping Uke's hand from the back. In the fourteenth technique, the wrist is once more a focus of pressure, but this time the arm is forced back against the shoulder, so that Uke topples over. It is called Shionage. Tori begins the fifteenth technique, Mai or Toshi, by raising Uke's arm upward and backward. Sume Otoshi, or Sumi Otoshi, is a very powerful technique, something similar to this sixteenth technique of Randori no Kata, used to be seen quite often in films, such as Bad Day at Black Rock. The final technique of Randori no Kata, Hiki Otoshi, uses a twisting action combined with a strong pull. Free practice. In this sequence, Ken Broom and Sean Hoddy show the type of free practice which will be found in many Aikido dojo. This is part of the system and gives students and teachers alike the opportunity Yame. to try out their techniques. It is not a fight or competition. One person takes on the role of Uke, the attacker, and then the role of Tori, the defender and counter-attacker. Counterattacks. In all martial arts systems of training, every attack has a defense and a counterattack. And that counterattack in its turn has a defense and counterattack. Here we show some of them. Counters to the basic 17 techniques of Randori no Kata.
UK attacks with Shomin Ate and Tory defends with Waki Gatami. UK attacks with Aigamai Ate and Tory counters with Oshi Teoshi. Yaku Gamai Ate is met by Tori with Gedan Ate. When Uke tries Gedan Ate to attack her, Tori uses Aigamai Ate to counter. Uke attacks with Ushiro Ate. Tori counters with Tenkai Kote Hineri. Here we have an example of Uke attacking with Oshi Teoshi and Tori turning the tables on him by using the same technique as a counter. To an attack of Hiki Teoshi Tori replies with Tenkai Kote Hineri. To an attack with Kote Gaishi, Tori covers his hand with an identical grip to make a kind of hand sandwich. Uke attacks with Tenkai Kote Hineri. But before he can succeed, Tori reaches under his arms and applies Waki Gatame technique. To Uke's Shionage technique, Uke replies with Shionage also. In this sequence, we see some of the holding and locking techniques of Tamiki Aikido. Advanced balance breaking techniques. Shichihon no Kuzushi. At the beginning of their training, students are unable to appreciate the difference which a slight change in balance can make. As we said earlier, the effectiveness of Aikido techniques does depend on a loss of balance by Uke. Either Uke loses his own balance by moving badly or Tori must cause him to lose it. A technique can be applied by using sheer brute force, but this is more in keeping with the techniques of the earlier schools of Jujutsu, which in ideal circumstances Aikido students try to avoid. Here we see a demonstration of several balance breaking techniques.
Tori tries to keep his or her mind in a state known as Zanshin. This means that the mind is alert, undisturbed, like a still pool of water, which reflects an image of the moon. Professor Tomiki introduced competition into Aikido training. The most common form of competition is called Tanto Randori, competition with a knife. For safety's sake, a rubber knife is used or a simulated knife. Before students take part in a competition, they train at Tanto Randori no Kata, prearranged forms of attacking and defending against a knife. The method of using the knife is restricted to a straight thrust. There are no slashing techniques and no concealed types of attack. In a competition, Uke attacks until he scores a hit on Tori or until Tori succeeds in countering his attack effectively. A competition would look something like this. advanced stages of Aikido training, two wooden weapons are used. The wooden sword, or boken, and the jo, a short strap. These will be part of our next Aikido video.